On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, very exciting, Leslie Richardson makes her debut as co-host of the show. Hey everybody, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I am your new host, Leslie Richardson, joining Robert Green. And today we're going to be talking about live share with the lovely Felicia Shaw, who's one of my colleagues in the Visual Studio universe. Welcome, Felicia. Hi, Leslie. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So in today's crazy times, I'm sure a lot of us are, you know, just working in their small apartments or wherever they're at and trying to collaborate on code can be really challenging when your teammates aren't in the room with you. So I'm pretty sure LiveShare can help out with that, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, I think everybody understands the value of remote collaboration in this time. And for good or bad, we are in this situation. I'm very glad to be working on a tool that can help developers uh, with the situation. So we've actually seen an unprecedented amount of growth for live share in the last few months, which is not surprising. It's become a lifeline for a lot of developers as their teams become completely geographically distributed. It's the first time for very many of these people to not have co-located teams. And we're seeing a real paradigm shift in the way we view collaboration in the developer space. Um, LiveShare is obviously, for those who don't know, a remote developer collaboration um, tool that you can use from Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio. Um, and it actually helps you share not just your screen, but your entire context. So there's a lot of beauty in the actual um, extension that is live share. It's proving to be very useful. Awesome. So yeah, can you just give a brief overview of what exactly live share is within Visual Studio? Yeah, so live share is an extension on both Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio, it comes in built. In VS Code, it comes as um, an any extension. You have to like go and download it from the marketplace. And what LiveShare does is it helps you as a host um, share your code base. So for instance, if you're in a repository and you're developing something and um, you need to ask a quick question or need help with debugging something, what you would ideally do is if you're working in the same space, you would pop over to your coworker's desk and say, hey, Leslie, can you help me with X, Y, Z? I'm stuck here. Um, and oftentimes you do these like micro collaborations before you do a pull request um, or you send this question over chat and have this back and forth with like screenshots of what's happening, what's going on. Um, extremely cumbersome, not good at all. So LiveShare yeah. came in over here and decided to uh, do something better. So what we do is as a host, you in a LiveShare session, you create a session, you share a link with the guest. Um, what that does is remote your entire repository or code base over to the guest without making a copy on their machine. Now the guest is actually in your repo, is able to co-edit with you uh, using all the language services uh, that our modern IDs have to offer, which is brilliant. Um, you know, all your syntax highlighting, autocompletes, et cetera. Um, you can share your terminal, so you're able to execute and run code together. You're able to, um, because of that, also like debug together. Um, my Which favorite. Awesome. Yep. Code debugging. That's that's right, Leslie. <laughs> and um, you can also share a server, uh, which means that if you're developing a web app, you can launch um, an application on a local host and have that actually shared to your guest. Um, so we really do try to recreate the entire looking over your shoulder experience um, for the developer. That's great. Yeah, because in the past when I've collaborated on code, one of the issues I've had is, you know, my friend will send me a list of other things that I need to download to even use the code first. Like, do I have to do that in live share? Yeah. So setup is actually such a big problem when it comes to developers. I think it's one of the biggest barriers to entry. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I personally hate it. So no, you don't actually. That's the awesome thing about live share is, um, you know, I, I often compare it to like, um, word online or like when you share a link to like an online document um it's as simple as that so uh, the host is just sharing a link to their repository their entire context and they don't have to, the guest doesn't have to download any dependencies um 
the project just works. Um, yes, that's, that's so <laughs> great. For real, yeah. <laughs> just a real pain. It's like you want to help your friend out, but at the same time, just knowing all the roadblocks you're gonna have to go through to figure yeah. out one tiny bug. That's the amount of packages you got to download. And um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I hate I don't know about you, but um, you know, a controversial topic, but I hate the NPM package manager. I, it, it, it's, it's great. But listen, I hate yeah. when I get out of sync. And uh, yes, you know, yeah. It's like, oh, you didn't update? Well, no, no. I thought it would kind of do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, do you have like? Can you demo like some of this? Because this sounds really cool. Yeah, sure. So actually, um, I wanted to show something very fascinating that's new for Live Share, and that's beyond just the capability that I just mentioned. So. You know, everybody was super excited about LiveShare. It's very unparalleled in the industry. There's not very many products which can do the level of um, collaboration that's comprehensive in the developer, um, you know, tool chain that LiveShare can do. But we wanted to push more, especially during like remote work time. And we wanted it to be possible for developers to communicate without distractions from within the um, IDE. Now, we had got a lot of feedback from developers that it would be very useful for them if um, uh, we had chat or audio calling. And because a lot of them use LiveShare for interviews or they use them for teaching um, or even when they're having long pair programming sessions for like five, six hours at a time, they would like to have like a constant call going. Um, so... LiveShare now has um, integrated chat available uh, and audio available. Um, so I'm going to actually show you a video on how that works and I'll like talk over it. Um, so what we're actually going to see is a LiveShare session between a host in Visual Studio Code and a guest in the browser. Um, now, that's another fascinating thing, which I'm happy to uh, elaborate on after this video. But let's get started. Um, so over here, you see the host is starting a live share session, but they're in the VS Code instance. Um, and they shared this link over, and the guest has pasted this in their browser. Um, they are getting authenticated through GitHub, as you can see. and. This is like this super powerful experience where they're already having their VS Code instance in the browser. Um, you will see they clicked on the chat during a session and it pops up on the host side and the guest side and they're saying hi to each other, let's get started. The guest over here is a new employee and the host over here is trying to onboard them to the extensibility API of LiveShare actually. Um, so it's really great for like even walkthroughs and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, oftentimes uh, you want to be able to do this without having to spend hours, um, you know, in the office together. So if the guest has a question, they can quickly be like, hey, do you want to um, ask me, I share a live share session and I can walk you through this. Anyway, so um, what you're also seeing over here is a comment, which is like super cool because you can have also async communication within a live share session. Um, and the host sees the comment and says, hey, I want to explain it further. Can we get onto an audio call? So the host gets on an audio call with the guest, and um, that's a little workflow for you. So what you saw there were three different things. I know the video was pretty quick. Um, you saw a comprehensive uh, integrated communications package that we're trying to build with LiveShare. Uh, now, this is a preview feature, so I just want to point that out to all the users. Um, but what we wanted to do was enable integrated chat where there were two types of chat options. You had the ability to directly message users um, when you're not in a live share session to get you into a session because a lot of times you're not free. Um, and a lot of times users... Um, will have suppressed their chatting, um, you know, companion, whether that's, uh, you know, Slack, Teams, et cetera, that they use in their companies, um, Skype. And you want when, and we expect this chat to be something that accompanies you when you're in your productive time space. So people will only message you in here when they're actually trying to collaborate with you on code. Um, so, you know, I can say, hey, Leslie, are you free for a live share session? And then I have a quick question. So I use that direct message and you say, sure. And then we get into a session and then we have a session chat 
where you saw in the video that I shared, they were talking about different parts of the code and questions that they had. Uh, now, what's cool about the session chat is obviously the context that's driving the session beyond um, uh, just whatever you're sharing. So let's say I wanted to add somebody else to the session. I can go back to direct chats for people who are not in the session. I can add Robert, for instance, and say, hey, Robert, are you free? Add them to the live share session. Now he's in the session chat, which is like a group chat, essentially. Yeah. So how many um, people can I add, ultimately? Yeah, so there is... Um, <laughs> We have up to 30 people. Um, what? Yeah, so there's a lot of people you can add. Um, I, I think um, we've had people use it for up to that for like classrooms. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so professors or like people streaming like their live coding sessions or something like that. That's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> yep, it gets pretty messy at that point, I would say. Uh, <laughs> Especially if you're trying to do like a group pairing session for 30 people. Usually at that level, we see people doing this read only live share sessions, which is a type of live share session. Uh, we have read write and read only where you can actually limit access to your, um, as a host, you can limit access to your repository. Um, so, you know, you have less you have people watching more than <laughs> like jumping in. Yeah, yeah. Neat. I also noticed that uh, you mentioned at the start of the video that one user was using the browser and the other was using the VS code that exists just on your desktop as yeah. usual. So yeah. on top of not having to have the same environment set up as the other person, I can also just be in a completely different VS ID and Yeah, yep. Collaborate. I think that's absolutely, that's, uh, this is actually a brand new, again, it's a preview feature that we launched um, in March, and we did that in response to COVID. And uh, we saw a lot of people in the world, and not just professional developers, but uh, students and teachers and um, people who don't rely on like enterprise level tooling and cannot often buy, uh, you know, those packages or subscriptions rather. <laughs> and we, we, we had to support them. And we realized that the community really wanted something that could help out. Uh, and one of the key drivers for that also was technical interviews because suddenly we saw that everybody needed a tool that oh, was reliable yeah. that students could use, you know. So this is primarily meant for those people uh, with like the lowest barrier of entry. Like you don't need to know how to download an IDE. You don't need to know what IDE to download. You don't need to set any of that up. Um, if you want to collaborate and learn, um, the host is able to share a link out just like any live share session. And just for the users, um, you could always join with VS Code and Visual Studio and, you know, either or be a host and guest. But now you can add another dimension of uh, web. And now you can be in Visual Studio as a host and join from the browser. You can be in Visual Studio Code as a host and join from the browser. And yeah, so it, it just really opens up a lot of use cases. That is fantastic. I can't imagine, especially as like a student during this time, like even pre-COVID when I was in school still, like we try to collaborate all in the same environment and would just be a real pain in the butt. So yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I think I spent um, every semester or every quarter, wherever you went, like at least a week uh, setting up my <laughs> project right. for every class. Exactly. Oh my gosh. You'd be in office hours and just and the poor TA would be like, okay, you do this, this, and this. This doesn't work because there's a bug. So here's this workaround. Oh, oh not and then fun. think about the different OSs, right? Like the cool thing about this is you don't care if you're in Mac or Windows or Linux. You can um, cross OS. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> that is so wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just given all this and the changing world these days, what's next for LiveShare? Like, yeah. what can we see in the future? That's actually um, a great question. You know, we're very excited that we were able to pull off the web join and integrated comms. Um, we are trying to now um, increase our parity on integrated comms. So soon, um, so audio is available on Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and the web join. Uh, chat is right now only available for web join and Visual Studio Code. So next, we'll want to. Uh, have chat available for Visual Studio. So that's going to be big. Um, so we want to increase our parity with comms. And the other thing is we have seen as LiveShare is trying to support more and more platforms. So uh, Codespaces, as you may know, uh, was like a, 
big hot topic um, at Build this year. And, yeah. Um, for, for those who may not know, um, can you briefly sum up what Codespaces is? Yeah. Well, Codespaces is a way for you to have an environment, like a cloud environment, um, but it is actually an environment that you are cloning from a repository. So imagine you had an instance of your um, project or your code base stuck in time somewhere in the cloud that you could access at any point in time and other people could actually collaborate in that uh, cloud. Um, it's actually a pretty powerful concept because um, now you don't even have to rely on an IDE. Um, um, you can actually have an IDE in the cloud. So um, it's it's pretty cool. Um, and yeah. we have code spaces for um, GitHub and Visual Studio. So I mean, I think Leslie also, you can talk more about the Visual Studio code spaces too, yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. And I think a really cool thing, especially nowadays, is a lot of people are away from their main work um, computer or environment. So people are either working at like via remotely Yep. or just some other workaround, which may yep. not be that great. Or there might just be times both pre and post COVID where you'll come, you'll come home from work, but you still have to like fix one tiny bug and you can just pull up that same environment remotely yep. Yep. with code spaces, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so the cool thing about that is that code spaces come built in with live share. So uh, not only can you have an environment that you can access from like different machines, you can also collaborate on that environment with different people. So GitHub Code Spaces and, Li and um, Get Visual Studio Code Spaces both come in built with Live Share, and um, so that makes our parity to five. So we have VS Code, Visual Studio, GitHub Code Spaces, Visual Studio Code Spaces, and WebJoin. Um, so it's very exciting because I think it's really um, allowing a lot more users to come into the Live Share space. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. Another thing we're trying to help is um, enterprises onboard to LiveShare at a larger scale. So we've seen LiveShare has always been a developer's best friend. And we've seen a lot of like bottom-ups adoption of LiveShare. We've had individual developers love the product and want to use it. Um, but um, sometimes like organizations have extremely uh, stringent security requirements and we want to help um, these developers have their companies allow um, you know a company-wide onboarding of live share so we're looking to actually um, help them do that um, especially as we move more and more towards integrating with github and allowing those kind of policies to take place yeah that's great so yeah with that you got any other awesome nuggets to share about live share before you wrap up um let's see i think um live share another thing that i think we've been looking at um which is in like the research phase is how do we um, enable uh, students and teachers and this is something that as we say you know web join obviously helped with that but we want to take it a step further we want to make it easier for um, distributed learning to become a thing. And I think um, as education gets more democratized across, especially computer science education, um, gets uh, we've seen a trend towards boot camps and informal learnings and like learning from the community. And LiveShare wants to really be a part of that because we have the unique ability to have an interactive um, platform. We have a way in which you don't have to just sit and watch, but you have the ability to, for instance, copy paste that piece of code that a professor is writing and make your own notes in the parallel. Um, or like walk through uh, a debugger when you're a professor, you can actually see all the outputs and what's happening. So you, you have this like industry, um, like this brilliant IDE that is industry renowned and you're learning in that. So as a student, you are at an unseemly advantage over others who are learning from just like a PowerPoint deck or something like that. Um, so we really want to um, move further in that direction and like perhaps uh, make it easier for professors and students to learn um, using live share. And that would require some additional feature work. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that something along uh, early... Um, and end of 
next year, uh, this year and early next year, uh, we'll see something uh, cool in that space. All right. Well, I am sold on this. So if you're like me and you're and you also want to check out LiveShare, where do people need to go in order to get started with it? Yeah. So, you know, obviously, like I said, you can go to the VS Code marketplace and type LiveShare and you'll have it or uh, Visual Studio comes in built with it. So if you um, have the latest build of Visual Studio above 16.4, uh, you will have live share in the top right corner. You'll see a link called live share. Um, you should be able to click and actually start get started with it. And obviously, you can go to our trusty search engine and type in Visual Studio Live Share and access our docs to learn more about use cases, how you can get started, and um, how to use uh, web join, etc. That is awesome. Oh, well, by the way, it's all free. FYI, oh, in case gosh, everybody's yeah, wondering. Part. Yeah, <laughs> the best part. All of it's free, including the extension, right? Yep, everything's free. Even on Visual Studio, it's free. Um, yeah, it's the best part of any feature when it has yep. free. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, well, thank you so much, Felicia. This thank has been you for having me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is such a useful feature, especially nowadays. Everybody, try it out. I've used it a couple times. It's fantastic. And yeah, it really makes the world feel a lot smaller than it actually seems at times. Yep, yep. And uh, as always, we're very open. Leave us feedback on our GitHub repository or tweet at me. Um, we love hearing from customers. So yeah, if you try it, like it, don't like it, have suggestions, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks everybody and happy coding and collaborating. Yeah.